Put away the letters. Uh, do you want to buy this, Mrs. Ginsburg? Well, I would take it if I knew how the music went. Maybe I could have it sung for you. Georgie, you know, Georgie Jessel is here. Georgie Jessel? Is that so? Hello, Mrs. Ginsburg. Hello, Georgie. I'm glad to see you. You look fine. Mmm. You're getting so thin. Oh, forgive me for mine. What can I do for you? Sing this for me, Georgie. For you, anything. Abel, play the Blackbird song. All day long, I sing a song. I sing a song, cause there's nothing wrong. My blackbirds are bluebirds now. Bad luck's gone on his way. Good luck, had I come back to stay. My blackbirds are bluebirds now. I told a little whippoorwill, and I told a daffodil, and I told a preach on the hill that the wedding. Sunday honeymoon, Sunday yesterday. Life's worthwhile. Look at me with a great big smile. My blackbirds are bluebirds now. That's fine. Well, how are you folks? Nobody's as good as this. My mama's all right. My papa is he mad? Only mad he is all the time. Why? Why? He wants me to be a jeweler. I should work in a jeweler's shop. Me with my talent. I tell you something, Mrs. Ginsburg. If it wasn't for my mama, I'd run away. That's too bad. Georgie, please, sing me that song what you sang on Mrs. King's birthday party. That was no birthday party. That was a coming out party to Mrs. Pink's daughter. She's a debutante. Sure. That's her name, such a nice world. Ah, you're making jokes all the time, Mrs. Ginsburg. George, you can sing that song. All right, I'll sing it. But remember, you've got to buy something. You've been here already since early this morning. Abel. Play me the mother song. One bright and guiding light that taught me wrong from a right I found in my mother's eyes. Those baby tales
Hello, Bennett. How are you? This is my partner, Paul Byron. How do you do, Mr. Bennett? How are you, Mr. Byron? We saw your performance the other night. Yes, you were very good. Good? I was great. Why, did you hear what the critics said in Chicago? They said it was the finest performance I had ever given. Well, see you later, boys. You come back tomorrow. Hello, honey. How are you? How do you do, Mr. Bennett? I'm glad to see you. Thanks. I'd uh, like to get in to see the old man. Well, he's awfully busy just now. Oh. But I think I can fix it for you. Won't you sit down? Good morning. Good afternoon. Lady. Mrs. Well, what do you want? I would like to see Mr. Zigbert. You can't see him. He's out. How can he be out all the time? I come here every day, so he's always out. So when will he be back? He won't be back. All right. I'll wait. Don't forget, honey. There's a meeting at Rindy's at 8.30 tonight. I'll be there. Now, Miss Courtney, you don't have to look at that contract. Just sign it. Yes, thank you. Well, one of the brothers for you. Which one of the brothers I We don't have to put that in the contract. You leave it to me and everything will be all right. Good morning. Who let you in? I let myself in. Well, let yourself out. Now listen, Mr. Zigbert. I don't want to appear fresh, but I wish you'd give me a chance. I've been coming to your office for weeks and weeks, and I never can get in to see you. I just want to show you what I can do on the stage. I can play any kind of a part. Honestly. Look, I can play comedy. Isn't that good? Tragedy. Anything you like, I can do. Please, Mr. Zipring. Here, how would you like to hear a drama? I play all the parts myself. Here's a sample. Fine. But I don't want to know you either. Get out. Oh, Mr. Zigbert. All right. All right. But you'll be sorry, see? But someday I'll be a big star. I'll have my own theater, too. And I'll be different. I'll give young fellas a chance. That's all. Now, Miss Courtney, sign this contract. Can I get some money now? Sure. And I'll tell you something else. I don't know whether I want to work for you or not. I saw one of your shows the other night. You're not so hot. Well, of all the nerves. Anything can happen in the show business. How did he get by your secretary? Oh, she was powdering her nose, I guess. Why don't you fire her? I can't. She reads my mail. <laughs> <laughs>
Quiet, please. You know, you've been using these people pretty rough tonight. That isn't fair. The only reason we have these amateur nights is to give the folks a chance to show what they can do. Please. The uh, next act we offer for your approval is known as the man upside down. I bet he's no good. Whether he's good or bad, he's still upside down. Go ahead, Take him out. Let's look at him. Here he goes. Here he comes again. has a real surprise for you. Two very clever little girls, the From Hunger Sisters. They sing and dance. They must be rotten. <laughs> Nevertheless, they're going to sing and dance. Right, bring them on. Bring oh, them I on. might add, these two little girls are late of the Ziegfeld Follies of uh, 1901. Go ahead, Abe. Change of our great skies, stir them in the great skies that mean we need the cobwebs of the moon. Silvery moon was good in timing, fine to steal for timing that means we need the cobwebs of the moon. You make the clouds. His name is George Jessel. He's come out from the East to show us that he can entertain in the West. If he's good, he can stay in the West. If he's bad, he can go back to the East. Go ahead, Ed. that I'm from the East. This is the first time I've ever been out here in your country. I've had quite a tough time getting out here, too. I, uh, I came out in one of the new Ford cars. It's all right for me to mention Ford because he apologized. But uh, what I want to say is this. The new Ford is really a very, very wonderful little motor car. And I don't really think that Mr. Ford deserves all the credit himself for making the car. His son, Epsom, I uh, think he had a great deal to do with it. Oh, you mustn't kid about Epsom because he's the salt of the earth. Oh. <laughs> it's, a, it's a great little car, and it has all the, the expensive things that the more high-priced cars have. It has all the new light effects, the new gas effects, and everything. There's only one trouble with it. If you speak Jewish in the back seat, it stops immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I live in the Bronx, which some of you may know is a suburb of New York City. And uh, there's an Irish family that live on my block. Of course, I don't know how they got on my block. But anyhow, right above them lives an old gentleman by the name of Goldfarb, a Spaniard. <laughs> and, uh, 
This, uh, this fellow Goldfarb is one of those old fellows who came over here from the other side and he went up to the Bronx and he settled there. Not with everybody, by that is, I mean, he has spent the majority of his years right up in the Bronx. Never once did he come down to Broadway to see anything of the gaiety and white light of the city. But his son was very much different. His son made a great deal of money during the war, I believe, selling raincoats to the government or some such silly trade. However, the son came home one afternoon to his father. He says, Pop, he says, you've never seen anything much of life. Tonight I'm going to show you a real treat. I'm going to take you down to the Winter Garden. You're going to see 30 or 40 of the most beautiful girls in the world. Daddy, I know you'll enjoy the show. The old man says, well. So he fixed himself all up. And um, they went down to the garden. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, at the Winter Garden, as you may know, there is a large runway, a staircase, which protrudes from the center of the stage and goes almost to the back of the auditorium. The management have that there, so as the girls should come in closer contact with the jewelry salesman. However, <laughs> the old man and his son are sitting in about the fourth row, and the music plays. These lovely girls come tripping out, throwing pretzels or something. I don't remember what it was. Anyhow, the old man looks up at these 30 or 40 beautiful girls, and he says, Fui! Now, of course, ladies and gentlemen, Fui, in a certain language, means that it's not so good. So, um, the son, the son is naturally astonished at his father's attitude. He says, father, how can you look at 30 or 40 of the most beautiful girls in the world and say, Fui. The old man says, I was thinking of my wife. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen a great many things here this evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, a lot of tricks and songs and dances. And with your permission, I'd like to sing a song that I've dedicated to my mother. And uh, I just crave your indulgence. I'm a long, long way to my home folks, to my pals, to my old neighborhood. And I've wandered out here in the Golden West, just hoping that I'll make good. Maybe you folks won't like me. Maybe you'll treat me like you did the other act. You'll be unkind. But that's all right. Because I know that there's somebody that believes in me. That's, that's the part I left behind. Let me tell you something. The world may call you failure, and the face may grind you small, but folks, in the eyes of your mother, you're as big and as great as them all. Maybe you won't like my act. Maybe I'm a flop. But I know somebody that's praying for me, boys. And I know that our prayers are going to bring me right to the top. God love us. God give us.
My life is just a garden filled with dreams. Each dream a flower of yesterday. I gather all these flowers in my dreams and I tie them all in one bouquet. I see the violet we picked when first we met in my bouquet of memories I find among the lot one sweet forget-me-not in my bouquet of a memory I kiss each blossom around when night appears, I keep them fresh and a fair with lonely tears. I ask my heart each morn, why must there be a thorn in my bouquet? I dream of yesterday, of George and Cohn's Broadway, in a my bouquet of memory. Passing Herald Square. Weber and Fields, they're playing there. I remember them in my memory. See, who's that walking? Robert Mantell and Sam Bernard. What great artists. Oh boy! And as I live and breathe, who's that with them? There's Eddie Foy. How do you do, Mr. Mantell? I've always admired you. You were one of the greatest Shakespearean actors that ever lived. I've always wanted to be an actor. But my father, Mr. Mantell, never wanted to let me. He used to come into my little room and say to me, Mo, um, Georgie, never go on the stage. What do you think, Mr. Mantel? My son, sweet are the uses of adversity. Like the toad, ugly and venomous, wears yet the precious jewel in his head. But Mr. Mantel, will I ever be an actor? To be or not to be, alas, that is the question. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Bernard. How are you? What's new? What's new? Last night, I went out and bought a corned beef sandwich in the Leicester, and they charged me two dollars for it. Years ago, there wasn't a man strong enough in the whole world could live two dollars worth of corned beef. Any boy, I'll introduce myself. I'm Georgie Jessel. Hello, young fella. You're pretty small here, uh, kid. I was here to make you. Goodbye, Mr. Mantell. Goodbye, my son. Goodbye, Eddie Foy. Goodbye, Georgie. Goodbye, Sam Bernard. Goodbye, kid. Save your money. Although these pals are gone, thank God they linger on in my bouquet of a
KPO, George Jessel announcing. I'm going to sing a little song that I dedicate to my mother. And I hope that she's listening in. One bright and a guiding light that taught me wrong from a right I found in my mother's eyes Those baby tales she told The little roadway all paved with gold I found in a my mother's eyes. Just like a wandering sparrow, one lonely stone, I walk the straight and narrow. I go. God skip from from above. One real unselfish love I found in a my mother. KPO San Francisco. This concludes our program for tonight. We are signing.
here. I wonder why. Engineers probably got relatives here. <laughs> probably won't be able to start again until they put a quarter in to meet it. Oh, George. Lovely out here, isn't it? Oh, I think it's beautiful. There's only one trouble with sitting on the back of a train, though. We come out nice, sweet, and clean. In a few minutes, we look like the gold dust went. <laughs> well, let's go in and play bridge. Oh, uh, no. Now, let's stay out here and look at the beautiful moonlight. But there is no moon. That's funny, it was here a minute ago. Let's make believe there is. The nighttime is always lovely. Night is always especially kind to people that are in love. There was a great Russian poet one time by the name of T. Effingham Rabinowitz. He was a very well-known poet. And he wrote a beautiful thing about nighttime. He said, how sweet is the stillness of the night when one can hear the drone of the beetles, the chirp of the little crickets, and the sweet songs of the baby sardines as they leap from can to can. <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Well, I'll certainly be glad to get back to New York. You will, eh? Well, you're lucky. You've been traveling with your sister and her husband. Look at me. I haven't seen my folks for a long, long time. Georgie, when we get settled, you must come up and have dinner with us. Oh, I'd love to have dinner at your house. But I tell you something, I don't think your folks are so stuck on me. Oh, they're all right. They just never met anyone like you before. What, am I some kind of freak or something? Oh, you know what I mean. Oh, sure, I guess they're okay. But that, uh, that fella that hangs around with them, who is he? Why, he's known the family for years. He don't look kosher to me. What did you say? I, uh, I say it's getting colder out here. Yes, it is getting rather chilly. Are you chilly, honey? Well, you come right over to the stove. Georgie, I think you better sing something. All right. Maybe I'd better. <laughs> When my pals turn me down, you're the one pal I found. You're my real sweetheart. When the darkest day came, you smiled on just the same. You're my real sweetheart. And now that I find that fate has been kind, I'm gonna build you a love nest that's all silver lined. And I'll work and I'll slave for the things that you crave. You're a real sweetheart. Ain't that cute? It was lovely. Hey, say, don't you all want your birth made up now? He would think of that, wouldn't he? <laughs> well, Georgie, I think I'd better go inside. All right.
Mrs. Bendaha. Well, rather, it is very fortunate for us that Mr. Franklin had no trunk. I never held such bad cards in all my life. Good evening. Folks have a very lovely place here, haven't they? Yes. Say, did you hear the story about yes. the... Yes. Apparently, you know very little about bridge. Oh, this bridge? I thought it was Pinochle. Mr. Jessel. Mr. Jessel. I beg your pardon. I'll be back later. <laughs>
Nah, that's too old. Listen, young fella, I've been hanging around the show business for 40 years, and the song about mother is never too old. You may be right. Thank you. Here, baby, take it. Give me a kiss. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you all very kindly for the way you received Lucky Boy. I want to thank Mr. Zigbert, my manager, for giving me this opportunity. George M. Cole once said, the best way to finish is either wave a flag or introduce your mother. I haven't got one of George's flags, so I'll introduce my mother in the fourth row. He did mine, Mama. She's right there, right behind those people who paid. Mama, I'll see you after. When all my skies were gray, the sun that shined my way, I found. 